Let's talk about buns, baby. Let's talk about color jeans. Let's talk about you and me. This is why I don't have friends. Yes, she is in real life. Do, 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 do. Hi all, my name is Maddie from the Itty Bitty Homestead Committee. And if this is the first video that you are ever watching of me, I am going to apologize profusely because you have entered into a very niche side of YouTube. Today, I am going to give you an introduction into Arabic color genetics. Why? Because it is my most recent obsession when it comes to rabbits. Because if hyperfixating on rabbits isn't enough, I am going to get even more niche and hyperfixate on genetics. And this time it's color genetics. So let's get into this because uh, if not, I'm going to make up more theme songs and no one needs to see that. For those of you who are new to my bunny barn, this is Coco, also known as Brownie, depending on who you're asking in the family. Same bunny, different names. It's a long story between the fight of my husband and my daughter naming bunnies. It's a thing. Anyway, Coco is my main breeding buck, right? He's a caster, beautiful brown fur. I breed him with a white rabbit. A white rabbit and a brown rabbit breeding together to get a black rabbit? That's insane. In fact, these three rabbits right here, my two bucks right here, my two little brown rabbits here, and this adorable little gray rabbit right here, are all from the same litter, same parents. So why do we have so many different colored rabbits in the same litter? Well, let's get into it. All right, before we really get into everything when it comes to rabbit color genetics, we must understand that there are five different genetics that affect the color of your rabbits. And those five are labeled A, B, C, D, E. Thank goodness for small little um, helpful things like that because after that it can get a little convoluted. First gene we look into is our agouti gene. Uh, it's also known as the wild type gene. And then we go in to B, B being the black brown gene. Um, after that, we go into the C gene, the C gene being the color gene. After the color gene, we go into the dilute gene, We're looking at the extension gene. That is just a quick basic ABCD, what everything is. I'm going to be going into depth in those in the next sequential videos, but for now, we need to jump back into our lovely high school genetics class because otherwise, we're going to be lost, okay? Because you got to get into those little words and what they mean. Otherwise, when I start talking about big B, little B, little A, extension AT, it's, it's a mess. Talk about pugnant squares, recessive, dominant, and get into that. We're talking about any sequence of genes. We have two kinds of genes. We have recessive and dominant. Dominant genes are normally displayed by an uppercase letter, while recessive genes are showcased by a lowercase letter. With that being said, if there is a dominant gene in any of the uh the rabbit's coding that gene is the gene that is going to show with that being said just because a rabbit is showing a dominant color gene it does not mean that it has two dominant genes to give to its offspring it could have what is called a hidden recessive gene so in this case the sequence could be big b little b meaning that they look like they have a dominant gene but they are a carrier of a recessive gene for a rabbit to be a true recessive rabbit, they must have two lowercase letters in sequencing. So an example of this is my buck Coco. He has a, an agouti gene, but he has a recessive dilute gene. So he himself looks like a wild type rabbit, but he throws different babies because of that recessive gene. So he is a recessive carrier. So he looks brown, he can throw blacks, he can throw lilacs, he can throw blues, he can throw chocolates. So bunnies that don't look like him. The only way for him to be able to throw those bunnies is if the mom of the baby bunnies either 
is a recessive trait bunny or she is a carrier of a recessive trait. When we throw two genes together from mom and dad, that is called a locus or a pair of genes. Those genes written together is called a genotype or the true set of genes your rabbit has. Not to be mistaken for a phenotype. A phenotype being what the rabbit displays and a kind of a guess as to what their genetics could be. For example, a, my buck Coco, his phenotype is caster, but his genotype isn't because he is a carrier of that recessive gene. So phenotype, genotype, slightly different. Gene, what is true. Pheno, what is physically visible said, if there are hidden genes, a phenotype compared to a genotype, how do I tell if my rabbit has these hidden genes? Well, this is a great plug for pedigrees, which I am obsessed with. Pedigree your rabbits, okay? Like follow your genetic lines, make sure you know who mommy and daddy is, who grandma and grandpa is. Pedigrees, best way to figure out genotype and phenotype. Next best way, Start breeding your rabbits, right? Uh, trial and error and trying to figure out what the heck your rabbit is throwing. If you have a, you know, solid rabbit throwing brokens, there's something going on there because the broken gene is dominant, but you have a solid rabbit throwing a broken gene. So with that being said, where's that broken gene coming from, right? Who in your line has that broken gene? If it's a female that's a solid, you're probably getting it from your male line. So where are we gonna figure that out, right? Through our pedigrees or through trial and error breeding. The thing you can try is pugnant squares, right? So for instance, if you know that your phenotype rabbit has a dominant gene, you put the dominant gene, so a big B, and then you'll put a space beside that letter because we don't know what that hidden gene is. But we do know that they have a dominant gene because they're a dominant colored rabbit. So put it in your pugnant squares and figure it out, right? Well, how are we going to figure out what's dominant and what's recessive? I got you! Because we're going to start breaking down the A, B, C, Ds, and Es of color genetics. But in order to see what those color genetics are, you're going to have to tune in to the next video where I am going to go over the agouti gene or the wild gene. So come tune in next time. Uh, my next video could be up in five minutes or it could be up next week because I am hyper fixating on rabbit genetics and it all just depends on my work schedule. Right now I'm filming this video on my lunch break. So Hopefully this gives you a little idea on rabbit color genetics from a standpoint of just going over definitions and theories and we'll get into the nitty gritty next time. So thank you all for watching so far and I'll see you soon. Bye.